Australia. We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Our guest this morning, Representative John Ray Clement, Democrat here in the state of Tennessee. A uh, bill, a uh, Senate bill, 1707. Again, you're calling it? It's HB 1589 this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, House bill. I was reading Senate bill. I apologize. Yeah, this yeah. is one that was from last year. The new one that you've got in the House, which you are a representative, is what? HB 1589. 1589. The Tennessee Anti Lunch Shaming Act. Okay, and in terms of, you know, not doing the shaming with regard to students who can't afford to pay for much. It's just a children, yeah. pro let's protect children in our schools, make sure they get fed and they can perform well in our schools. And it's pretty much definitive, this is common knowledge, that, you know, a child with a hungry stomach, um, you know, um, at school, grumbling, sitting in class, doesn't focus as well, right? I mean, eating is part of making a good educational experience. Right, and in some instances, this is the only opportunity some children have to eat, mm -hmm. a, a well-rounded meal, the schools. And, you know, and I've heard from teachers, you know, and they, it just breaks their heart. The children come in on Monday morning, and they're cranky or they're just tired and it's because the reality is some of them haven't eaten most of the weekend and they come in and once they start to get it back into the swing of things on Monday morning they get them a breakfast or they get them lunch the child begins to perform well behave mm -hmm. and the data is clear that children perform much better in the classroom if they're not hungry yep no question let's take a couple calls on this and how do you feel about this seven three seven seven five eight seven Ronnie good morning Ronnie good morning hey Ronnie go ahead I got three short questions. Okay. One, I believe they need to have a box in the school somewhere, and everybody gives the note that can do it donation mm -hmm. to cover if somebody ain't got no meals to pay for. Mm -hmm. And two, I think that man that refused that kid needs to be fired. Hmm. And the third one, when I used to go to school, if somebody didn't pay for it, the teachers or something would go ahead and cover it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I was talking about that with representative during the break. You know, most of the, and it, I think of my son's school when he went through grade school, most of the staff that work in these cafeterias love children. They're wonderful people, the men and women that work back there. And he's absolutely right. Now, that's not something they should be required to do, but I know for a fact of cases where some of these cafeteria workers knew it, and they just picked up the tab for the kids. Oh, absolutely. And would pay for it out of their own pocket, which, again, they shouldn't have to do, but they do because they're not going to let this kid go hungry. Absolutely. It's just the same as, you know, teachers do that a lot and it's just like teachers spend right. money out of their own pocket to buy classroom supplies mm -hmm. in every school across the state of Tennessee especially yeah. here in Nashville and so a lot of teachers do that and we're not talking about this widespread problem I, I think you know we're talking about instances across the state where again one is too many but there are multiple instances I received a lot of emails really? since I've introduced this legislation from, who do you get the emails from across the state from Te parents teachers from who students who've endured it who are some of in college now who endured it in high school some are t I've received emails from teachers telling me stories of when they were in school so you know it's, it dates back and then I've received emails from parents whose children have undergone this and have come home crying or you know and, and they've had to deal with it and, and they're just upset because they know and they want to do like all of us parents want to do the best they can for their child and they're in a situation where you know they may not qualify for reduced lunch but they're right there on the cusp and so you know, it's a tough, it's a tough situation. But he's absolutely right, and and I, I do want to point out that you know, like my children go to public school here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Our PTO raises money. We help with school lunch debt. A lot of PTOs, a lot of parents across this state are helping satisfy these mill debts. I know. I was on Twitter last night, and Dr. Gary Hughes at J.T. Moore Middle School. Mm. Um, he, you know, uh, this has this bill has spurred a lot of discussion. So I, I know that uh, Anna Shepard on the school board has raised this mm -hmm. issue recently uh, in response to this legislation, and several principals. And so we're building this conversation across the state of Tennessee, and people are stepping up now that they know what's happening, mm -hmm. and they're paying off schools' mm -hmm. lunch debt. So we have a lot of good Samaritans out there, a lot of charitable people, and a lot of parents who, you know, put money in the bucket and and don't want any thanks they, they they do it totally anonymously and they're satisfying a lot of these lunch debts um, and so it's really unfortunate that we would ever get to the point where you know children would be punished for this and this bill you know even if it's not happening in a school or a school system 
belt and suspenders. I think we should do everything we can to make sure children are protected so that this does not happen. And is it happening in uh, just grade school, middle school, high school, one one school more than the other? Where is it predominantly occurring? I'm hearing about it a lot in, in, in all grades. Oh, okay. I, I think it all happened. the way into high school. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And I and I think um, the stories I've received, emails, calls, those types of things. I, I think it's pr fairly spread across. Uh, my initial instinct was that it would be primarily in elementary school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and then that may be the case. I just. Uh, okay. Based on I was the just stories I've heard, it spreads across the spectrum. Let's go to Ann next. Ann, good morning. Hi, Ann. Good morning. Hey. Um, three things. One, uh, Metro does shame students that do not pay for their meals. They do it, one, by handing out a cold peanut butter sandwich instead of a hot meal, and that does stand out, especially at the elementary level. Yeah. Two, the only way a school gets $10,000 in debt is by a child accumulating and moving through the system and that getting to be a debt at high school. Three, if Metro would assign a person at the beginning of the year to each school to assist in the filing the paperwork with these forms and explaining to all parents that whether or not they are going to partake in this program, the forms need to be filled out. I know I was the one that assisted in these forms. The program would be effective and we would not be accruing these debts because every child would have the paperwork on file and metro would be getting the funding for all children in the system but one thing needs to be clear all, all grade levels get shamed in metro schools i'm a 20-year retired employee and i saw it every day i worked because I was assigned in the cafeteria. High school students especially do not fill out their paperwork because they don't want to be shamed and they don't want that attention drawn to them. So they don't turn in that paperwork. And if you look at the numbers, the high schools are who have the five and $10,000 debt. I appreciate the work this gentleman is doing. It's not fair to the parents for this debt to accumulate with their child from kindergarten and then at the high school level say, now before Just your keeps. child can get a diploma, you must clear this debt. And what do you think? Well, I think she raised several good points <coughs> that my legislation addresses. And, and I have heard the stories about children being given peanut butter sandwiches or a bologna sandwich oh, okay. as an alternative meal. My bill would prevent that. Uh, my bill would also prevent any type of stigmatization or the, it expressly prohibits the denial of a diploma or participation in a graduation ceremony. And it also says once a child has accumulated the equivalent of five mill debts, the p school must communicate with the parent or guardian mm -hmm. and it makes sure that they have access to the application for free and reduced meals and then assist them with filling that out. And is that really what, it's interesting when she said that because I was gonna ask you just before the call mm -hmm. about the yeah. application process. I, I know there's programs out there for free and reduced meals. Yes. Great so, when these, so okay, and is that everywhere where some of this is happening and the problem is that that these families haven't filled out the paperwork and they would not have this issue if they went ahead and do this or is this not widespread? So as you know, I ran for mayor last year, yes. so I heard a lot of stories about this. And so what happened was, and, and, and as the previous caller said, we had every child in Metro ate for free for about four years. Right. And unfortunately, we fell below the threshold to qualify for that federal grant um, as the formula was established by the state of Tennessee and the federal government. And what I heard out on the campaign trail and as I uh, speak with constituents is, a lot of families are afraid to fill out a federal form. Mm. Uh, some of these may be immigrants, uh, may mm -hmm. be distrustful of, of government or being afraid uh, for any number of reasons. Uh, some parents, let's face it, are illiterate. Some parents, um, you know, some students may be embarrassed and don't want to be on free and reduced milk because they feel like they'll stand out if, if mm -hmm. they have that. Uh, so there are numerous uh, reasons for this, but you know, again, my, my legislation would require after the accumulation of five mill debts, 
that the, the school make best efforts to communicate with the parent or the guardian about filling out that application to see that they, if they qualify so that the child can get so on that sure program. Get on it. It's a great program. Yeah. I, I hate that Metro lost out on um, was it the, the, the When you say the, the thresholds, program. was it that there were not enough students? Or yeah, so that you, have, you have to have enough students that qualify for okay. free and reduced lunch. And I, I believe uh, Nashville would certainly qualify if everyone filled out the application. I see, and that's exactly Based one of the on points I, that yeah. Ann was making. Ann, thank yeah. you for your call. She's always uh, very involved with those issues, uh, being a former employee in the school Absolutely. system. Let's go to Sergio. Good morning, Sergio. Good morning. Hi, go ahead, sir. Yes, I was trying to figure out this. Uh, why don't we institute a program that if something happened, the, the guardian or the parent can provide like volunteer work to offset that as a way of pain? Hmm. Okay. Because yeah. you see, the situations change, and sometimes you are able to pay for the lunches, but if you lose your job or get sick or something like that, and the financial situation change, and the forms are not in on time, then your child gonna fall into that situation. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a fair question. If there's a way the parents who want to make good on it could. Um, well, based on my research, it comes down to it's, it's, it's about money. The school owes the money. They have vendors and they have to pay these bills. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's very right. difficult for them to exchange. And, and I will say that my bill expressly prohibits <coughs> making a child work to pay off a meal. Yeah, debt. they're saying, yeah, there was something where some schools maybe have the kids do chores. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. What, cleaning it. And that's absurd. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that that is expressly I prohibited by, by my bill, and I think. But it's allowed right now, as we sit here right now. A school has a child maybe that doesn't have all his pays bills paid off. They say, "Oh, you're coming after work after school, and you're going to mulch the the back playground." That's absurd. That's yeah. absurd. I, I, why can't I find out when that happens so I can go out there with a camera and video something like that happening? Yeah, no, I mean, I think Next you, time you get a call like that, call me so I can go out. <laughs> and then I can get in the principal's face, and then we can shoot video of that happening. I just find that hard to believe. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not saying that there's not some LEAs out there or schools that have their own set of policies that prohibit these things. I haven't heard about them, but they very well may. And, then, and of course, principals lead the schools, and, and they set policies themselves that may not be in writing. So... Again, this isn't necessarily happening everywhere. I don't want to cast a mm -hmm. negative light on our teachers that are doing amazing things every single day in every single school across the state, but I just want to make sure that we are protecting the children and so that this does not happen because, quite frankly, it is happening and it, and it shouldn't because, you, like you and I discussed, if it was my child, mm -hmm. if my child walked to the end of the lunch line and they dumped out his food and he went hungry oh. for the afternoon, and, you know, and my child, it, it, when he comes home, he's going to have access to food. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a snack. Now, you take some children in this city and across the state of Tennessee, mm -hmm. they don't have that. This is their opportunity to eat. Right. Right. In the school. Mm -hmm. And so if you deny that child or you punish that child for not being able to pay for that meal, then I think you need to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. It angers me. <laughs> I think it angers you. Oh, yeah. And I hope and I wish that it angered every one of my colleagues in the state legislature enough to pass this piece of legislation because this is the third year I've run this bill. Mm -hmm. Virtually identical. I had assistance from the Department of Education writing this bill mm -hmm. that has no problem with the bill and in fact supports it or supported it, I should say. I haven't heard from them this year, mm -hmm. but they wrote the bill as it is in its current form. And, you know, it, it is shocking to me that I cannot get this passed. Real quick, before we go to the break, Sergio just wanted to clarify something, yep. and we'll take a break. Go ahead, Sergio. Uh, yes, I was just wanted to clarify. I, I, in no way or form, I meant that the kids will work. Oh, yeah, right, 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 yeah. No, I, I, know, know, I, I understood. I just wanted to say that, right. that like, the parents or mm -hmm. the guardians can bring provide services for the school or something that can help them, you know, offset that balance for the kids. Yeah, no, and yeah. I, I took it that way as well. I'm glad yeah. you called back, Sergio, but I think we knew what you meant, and, and that's, I understand what you're saying. They, they need to pay off these debts, yeah. and, and his, his point is a good one, but it doesn't cover that debt. Listen, we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll take more of the phone calls, 737-7587. Then want to get from you first. Is there a cost attached with this bill? Well, yeah, answer so that. And also maybe what some of those who have not voted for it say, and why maybe you think it hasn't moved forward. Back with uh, State Representative John Ray Clemens right after this. Stay with us.